In a quiet corner of the Belgian countryside, there is a place which seems perfectly to capture the courage and the sacrifice of so many. But inescapably too, the hopelessness and the waste. Because it was in these fields that the first major battles of the Great War were fought. And it was in the same fields four years later that the war stopped. No ground gained, so many lives lost. The cemetery at St. Symphorium has been here since the war. It was the Germans who created it, but the farmer who owned the land at the time had a demand. The Belgian landowner said to the Germans, you can have this land for free so long as you treat the German and the British dead the same, so long as you commemorate everybody equally and give them equal burial rights. And so they lie side by side, Germans, British and Commonwealth. And among them, the two men who, for Britain, mark the beginning and the end of the fighting. This is John. And John was in the Middlesex Regiment before the First World War, and he comes across with the British Expeditionary Force. And they're searching for the Germans here in Belgium, near the Belgian town of Mons. And he goes out on his bicycle, and they spot the Germans, and his mate goes back to tell base. But John is killed in action, and he becomes the very first British combat casualty on the Western Front, dying on the 21st of August, 1914. And if we just walk this short distance here between John and George. And George is the very last British soldier to die in combat during the First World War. He's a barman from Leeds, and he fights throughout the First World War. He was here in 1914, perhaps he'd met John, but he fights his way through the whole First World War, and then he's killed just an hour and a half before the minute hand ticks to 11 o'clock. They rest just yards apart, the first and the last, and in between 1.1 million British and Commonwealth soldiers, 2 million German soldiers. Wilby, Dees, Mead, they all have names, even if we don't know some of them. And they all have stories. John Pars is reflected in these words from his mother Alice, from the family home in Finchley, just weeks after the war started. She wrote to his regiment. I have not heard from him at all, she said. The war office can tell me nothing. I should be very grateful for any information as to his whereabouts. And so with this letter from a mother about her boy, Alice Parr was to become the first to grieve, the first of so many to lose their sons in this war. It's hard not to be moved um, by coming to a War Graves Commission Cemetery. It's hard to think of anything but the sacrifices of these men. I recommend that everybody should come and visit um, the Western Front. There's nothing like coming and seeing where these men fought and died and now rest forever. What are the lessons to be learned? I think everybody has to take their own lessons when they come and see these places. The armistice was signed just after 5 a.m. on November the 11th. It was to come into effect at 11 a.m. And yet still, on that day alone, more than 10,000 men were killed or wounded. Mark Stone, Sky News in Belgium.